It's great to be with uh, th this this group. What an exciting uh, few few days for us, and uh, I'm honored to be with uh, pioneers just just in this room. Uh, two people I admire uh, greatly, uh, and more people I'm newly getting uh, used to admiring. I want to say something about the previous speaker, uh, Slava Rubin, when he indicated that his company led the crowd rev crowdfunding revolution, uh, he was absolutely correct in that. In fact, I think all of us should write to Sweden and suggest that he win the Nobel Prize for economics. Mohammed Yunus won it for microfinance. This is more important than microfinance. This is more sustainable. It's uh, more in line with the new age of capitalism. And congratulations for the work you've done so far. Myself, uh, the, the, the bio is a little, little bit dated. I didn't realize we gave a three-year-old uh, bio, but it's uh, 21 patents now and 21 companies since uh, that uh, sellout uh, of the medical technology. Uh, we have an incubator business and we uh, uh, fund a, a bunch of uh, startups, some of which uh, address uh, education of entrepreneurship at a young age. We have a fashion company where we put tables in boutiques and we bring eight to 12 kids around the table. They make bracelets or necklaces or sundresses. And then if their parents opt for the second part of the program, we order 100 bracelets. They go out and sell them. Half the money goes to charitable cause that they choose, and half goes to them to be, to be able to buy skateboards or whatever they want to buy or dresses. Uh, and uh, it, it, it teaches creativity, and uh, it uh, allows uh, uh, kids to have their first taste of entrepreneurship. I couldn't agree with Slava more about the importance. But the big idea that I brought today is this idea of the California Stock Exchange, which is uh, based on anticipating the passage of the McHenry crowdfunding bill that passed through the House at 405 to 17 uh, about a week ago. I don't think uh, uh, the nation understands the significance of how important that is. If you're familiar with the bill, it allows uh, companies to raise funding uh, up to a million dollars if you're non-audited financials, two million dollars with audited financials. You can collect uh, up to ten thousand dollars of investment from each investor or ten percent of their income, whichever is less. Uh, and it allows for more liberalization of reaching out to s for solicitation. As far as we understand the bill, you can you can solicit to non-accredited investors, which has never been able to be done before, so using Facebook, YouTube, Indiegogo, and be able to reach out. Now, we're all trying to understand the clarification of how the bill will be interpreted, language is language, and, and uh, uh, we want it to be interpreted the way that we want, and now it's into the Senate. So we appreciate everybody's support to continue this momentum. And the fact that it passed with monumental bipartisan support, 405 to 17, uh, the Republicans, Democrats, President Obama wrote to Congress asking for support. And uh, you know we talk about the deadlock in Washington. Everybody complains and whines. Well, we finally found something that it seems has incredible bipartisan support, and it should, for good reason. I really personally believe that this one change is more instrumental in changing and in, in spurring the recovery uh, out of this recession than anything else that's been talked about. It's more important than I think who's chosen to be the next president. It, it is fundamentally important. This is where the jobs are going to come from. And you're about to see perhaps the greatest economic boom that we've ever seen. Uh, we've all experienced the 1990s where there was a tremendous boom that related to financing tech companies in Silicon Valley. Well, this is a hundred to a thousand to a million fold greater than that. And when we're talking about thousands of angel investors, we're talking about here creating 350 million angel investors. We, we want to reach out with this campaign though, so that everybody in the entire United States feels that an obligation in their community to at least put $100 towards a startup. And we're going to reach out to make that happen with the California Stock Exchange. So our model, we have two models. 23 million jobs in five years on the way. Not just any jobs, but jobs people love. Because you're funding your passion, your dream. The other motto is, this is not your father's stock exchange. We plan to be more hip, more cool, more like Apple took on IBM in the 80s. We want to be taking on the New York Stock Exchange, which is old and outdated and doesn't care about small companies, or even NASDAQ, which is supposed to be the exchange for small companies. Everyone who participates knows if you're not a $50 million offering, NASDAQ doesn't want to see you anymore. 
I already talked about the McHenry crowdfunding bill. Uh, one of the things that we're uh, adding is uh, in order to be listed with us to raise capital through the California Stock Exchange, we're in including a requirement that wasn't in the bill to have an endorsing investor. This is somebody that has, has to have experience in the field that's willing to put their picture and their experience up aside the company's profile so that uh, people coming from the outside who may not know if it's a medical field like I've been, this endorsing investor should understand clinical trials, should understand the science, should testify that they've done due diligence and they understand that the company's clinical results are what they've presented to them be in the information presented. Uh, we also are uh, setting up uh, for the first investment to only be $100. You can go up to 10000 but the way we envision this is uh, we hope the Calex button will be on the bottom of press releases made by the companies, on the bottom of videos, on the bottom of articles, kind of like you see the Facebook and Twitter. And you have the choice to hit the Calex button. The first, the first button will take you to a profile of the company on our website or another website. By the way, we use Gus.com as the backbone for our profiles. We couldn't have found a better profile platform than Gust. The second button takes you to the terms and conditions, or the term sheet, so to speak. So if, you, if they're offering part of their revenue, if they're offering equity, if they're offering dividends, whatever the deal is, will be on a very simple sheet, which would be the second button. The third button will be the legal requirements. I'm not investing more than 10%. I'm not investing 10,000. 10, and basically following all, all of the regulations set by the McHenry bill and whatever comes uh, through the Senate. And then the fourth button is a $100 investment that will instantly go to the company to be instantly put, put to work. Another uh, unique aspect is uh, we're planning to uh, like Gene, I'm a sports fan, and uh, we have in college football the coaches and writers poll that establishes rankings for the teams. Well, when they developed that for college football, they were kind of clever that at the time, way, way back when that was invented, uh, they weren't getting enough press coverage. And then all of a sudden they invited writers to have an opinion on the teams, and all of a sudden the coverage of the teams started picking up in the newspapers. Well, we hope the same thing happens here for the companies that we're trying to support. So we're planning to have a financial writers and mentors poll. And by mentors, we mean head of incubators, head of venture funds, head of mentorship groups. A lot of the people that are in this room would qualify. And uh, if you're entering the site, because the criticism of crowdfunding is what about the risk? Well, we're trying to develop some unique features in the CalX platform to allow investors to come and feel a little bit more comfortable. The endorsing investor, if you want to really minimize your risk, you'll go to the top of the poll, number one. That means the most financial writers and the most mentors all agree that this is the company that's the best investment with the least risk. And if you want to take more risk, you go to the bottom 100 or you go beyond that that's not even, not even ranked. But we're planning to offer a number of value-added services. We're brainstorming, and I'm not going to list all the brainstorming ideas, but you get the idea with those ideas that we plan to add value-added features above and beyond just the McHenry bill itself. I already talked about the, the clicks. The other part that we see is that uh, we plan to conduct a campaign that uh, would uh, help all the crowdfunding sites. And by the way, when, when you come to our site, we have preferred service providers, we have uh, links to uh, Rocket Hub and Indiegogo. We feature in the middle of Rocket Hub right now, but you go to the left with another click in all the other crowdfunding sites. We plan to be inclusive, not exclusive. In a moment, uh, we're gonna take a short look at the website. The, uh, here are some other requirements that, uh, that uh, are interesting. For, you know, first of all, we have, uh, Cliff Robertson, a friend of mine, and Rob Thomas. Uh, Cliff Robertson won uh, an Oscar and Academy Award. You may know him as the uncle in Superman recently, or excuse me, Spider-Man. And uh, 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 those of us that are a little older remember that he won the Oscar for the movie Charlie, or Flowers for Algernon. We plan to have an advertising campaign with him. He's elderly, he, ha he exu exudes credibility. And then also with my other friend, Rob Thomas, the lead singer of the band Matchbox 20, to kind of reach out to youth. And what we want to do, basically, is a primetime television campaign that compels people to invest in their local community, to invest in startups. And we're test marketing this in different audiences where we're trying to find people that have never invested in their life in a company that are, on, are not on this list of however many thousand angels, millions of people that, that have never participated. And we're going to basically 
ask them as a sense of duty, as a sense of community, as a good investment, and, and as a, a compel them with our heartfelt emotion to participate in this because it's great for them, it's great for the community, and even if we're wrong and every investment is lost, at least we spurred economic development and gave chance to people to pursue their dreams. We plan to set up local meetings because when we test marketed this, we found the way to pull investors in that never participated ever, the so-called money in the mattress, was that they don't like Wall Street, imagine that. And they, they don't like working at great distances. So they, as soon as we hit on the topic of local investing, all of a sudden, the number of people that said that they would never invest all of a sudden want to invest. So what we plan to do is in our advertising campaigns with a joint venture with Patch.com, if you don't know Patch.com, they, they have local newspapers on the internet and it's, it's catching on, very, very hyper local news. And we will set up in, for instance, in Santa Monica, a Santa Monica meeting, Santa Monica exchange that will meet local entrepreneurs with local investors and then that feeds into the California Stock Exchange and we keep records of what the transactions that may take place. Some of the listing requirements that help bring new people in, and we're trying to bridge the left and the right here, by the way, and, and, and we want to give a special listing preference for companies that demonstrate social good. In fact, it is a mandatory requirement that one way or another in their application to be listed with us that they establish some social good, but we have a very broad net uh, interpretation of that. We also voluntarily want uh, companies it, it, it's a requirement that they accept a self-audit for equal pay, for equal work, for women and minorities. We also uh, plan to have risk reduction. We give extra points, and this fits in with this conference, we give extra points which mean they will be in a sector of reduced risk on our listing if they have participated in mentorship uh, uh, programs, uh, and we're looking to expand that. I've picked up a lot of ideas here, perhaps the entrepreneurship badge and some other ideas that have come out. But basically, if they've established that they've had mentorship, that they're endorsed by an incubator, that they have a proper board of directors, a proper board of advisors, uh, we will give them a designation that, that designates to investors coming that they're lower risk than, than, and will feature them as well. We believe that uh, foreign investors coming in to this exchange creating U.S. jobs should get uh, increased immigration status. We're going to continue to lobby that, lobby for that. You heard Ted Leonois earlier. We believe, as he does, that uh, this money that's held overseas should be brought back tax-free. Unlike Ted, though, we want it all for small companies. He was, he was only giving us a third. Uh, we want it all. <laughs> we want all 100% of that money coming back going to small companies. And uh, we also believe in export sales, so we're going to give preferential treatment of listing to companies that, that embrace uh, exports, which also create, creates jobs. Uh, we're going to look at the website in just a moment, but uh, enabling people to pursue their dreams, 23 million jobs in five years, obviously a big goal, adding millions of first-time new investors, freeing up frozen capital, creating a stronger tax base. And this item, providing unprecedented access of capital to women, minorities, and youth that are excluded greatly from current systems. This has been a common topic today. On our website, we have a speech from Isabel Alenda. It's a TED speech where she talks about the fact that two-thirds of the labor on planet Earth are done by, is done by women, the physical labor, but yet they only hold 1% of the assets on planet Earth. There's obviously an imbalance here. I just got the statistics too that women own 48.6% of American private businesses, which is great because it was only 6% of American private businesses during President Kennedy's time. But one thing that's wrong with that is they're only receiving about 5% of the venture capital being uh, invested, and uh, that's an imbalance as well. We want to have this uh, unprecedented access to capital, to people that are kind of excluded from the current, current systems. We obviously are bold and believe that we can do a lot with this. We really believe not just us, but the other crowdfunding sites have a chance to be the solution to our recession. The greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but it is too low and we reach it. Michelangelo. The key to economic recovery is focusing on energizing, enabling, educating, and empowering people to follow their dreams. This is something that kind of pulls this whole conference together, educating, enabling, people following dreams. Just 
I'd like to uh, end uh, with uh, a, a link to the site, and, we, and this is a short video that many of you have probably already seen before, but I think it, it fits with the group. Can you uh, scroll down? You get a little look at the site, too. You'll see Gus there. These are all partners that we have that we, we try to drive. We're trying to be inclusive, not exclusive. So Indiegogo is on our site, and, and we really want people to come to the site and find what they need. And we have some services, this one here. I think uh, many of you have seen this years back, but I think it uh, pulls us all together. So I want to end, end with this uh, video. Which we didn't uh, preload. The, the uh, underneath, you'll see 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the things, the ones that you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch trade winds in your sails, explore, discover, dream. Mark Twain. What that video was was, was the uh, Think Different video from uh, the old uh, Apple campaign from uh, started in the 1980s. And what it says is uh, the uh, people crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that, that do. And I think we have a lot of crazy people here. <laughs>